E2, the next step in infotazine evolution. Even armies need to send out reinforcements from time to time, and Nikon have done that by releasing the D700 to help the prospect boys on the front line. Hi, I'm Matt Grayson, and today Photozine TV is looking at this camera to see if we should be saying, watch out, Canon, the cavalry's coming. So what's it got? Well, it's got the same 12.1 million pixel CMOS sensor, full frame, as the D3. It's not as fast, but it's got the dust reduction, it's got the high ISO, it's got the X-Speed processor, it's got basically all the same features that the D3 has. It's just not as big, but it's slightly bigger than the D300. What appears to have happened is that Nikon owners have asked for the full frame sensor, but they don't want to pay the D3 prices. So what uh, Nikon have done is they've released a clipped version of the D3, and that's basically what this is. And here she is in close-up. She's fitted with the 14 to 24 AFS lens, 2.8G uh, ED, which is a really good lens, uh, specially designed for the FX uh, sensor, which is the full frame. On the back you'll notice it's roughly the same as the D3, uh, including even the round uh, optical viewfinder. All the layout is roughly the same, same 3 inch LCD screen, uh, the buttons are all in the same area. Even on the top, the mode dial still has the three quality white balance and ISO settings and the small manoeuvrable wheel just underneath it which you need to operate by pressing the small button at the top there. The body is made of a magnesium alloy for durability and it's also to combat weight issues. The same magnesium alloy also surrounds the prism, mirror box and rear body. The shutter blades are made of a new material which is a mixture of Kevlar and carbon fibre. The new shutter system has been tested through 150,000 cycles to ensure durability and a self-diagnostic has been fitted to make sure it's always running properly. Now the body is weatherproof to keep out dust and moisture with o-ring seals where connections are made. Now Nikon say that the weatherproofing of the D700 is superior to the D300 but it's equivalent to the F6. So we'll just have a quick look through the menu system that the D700 has. Uh, current users of the D3 will find it familiar, well on the D300 actually. You hit the menu button there and that will take you into this. Now down the side here you've got your separate tab folders uh, for different uh, playback uh, menus such as the playback menu here which is on the blue arrow. Uh, pressing the right button will go into the different areas uh, and pressing the left will come out of them. Uh, you do that using the navigation pad here, so if we want to go to the display mode, we press right and then it will take us into the separate area of that mode. We can make any changes. Pressing left will take you onto the tab here, we can then move down. So next we've got the shooting menu, which will give you all your different options such as your uh, file naming, the image quality, so you can set that to RAW or TIFF uh, if you decide you want to. Uh, the image size, so you can set it to use more or less pixels. Uh, you've got your compression, uh, white balance modes, set picture control. Now that is uh, something that the, can the Nikons have been adding onto the, uh, onto the D series. Um, you've got the standard neutral, vivid and monochrome. They will basically just give or take away a certain amount of colour to the image, uh, which just gives it a little boost before you uh, put it onto editing suite. If we go scroll down, you've got your custom setting menu. Now this is where you can set your function button, which you can find there, just on the other side of the camera. And you can set that to have different features here. Um, and you just go through those and set it uh, like that. Your setup menu has got your format memory card and your, your core features of the camera. And uh, your my menu, which is uh, like a custom area for you to use. So a couple of features that the D700 has, uh, one of them is Live View. Now to operate Live View, we just select it on the, uh, on the top dial there. I've set it to single shooting, that's because the Live View mode on, the, on this that I've got it set at the moment is for single shooting. We go into the menu, we go to the shooting mode, and we scroll down until we come to the Live View option which is right there. We then have to set that to handheld unless you're using a tripod and that's that set up now. Now then we hit the function button and then we can see that's come up as a live view there. 
We're now going to go out and about with the D700 to see what kind of photographs we can take and see how good it really is. So one of the features that the D700 has uh, that is taken from the D3 is the virtual horizon. Um, it's a small kind of heads-up display similar to what you'd find on an aeroplane and uh, it basically tells you whether your horizon is straight or not which is pretty good um, in camera. Um, so if we have a look on the screen here you'll be able to see what I mean. So you can see here this little yellow line, uh, this basically says that it's out of alignment. It needs to be aligned with these two dashes here to get it level and also you've got a small arrow at the top here telling you whether it's um, bang straight or not. So we can use the ball and head on the tripod here and we can just adjust that. You can see it moving in camera and we just move that until it turns green there. And it takes a little while to get it sorted and there we go that's green now and that'll be ready to shoot a nice steady landscape shot. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go closer into the uh, stables. We're going to, there's a beautiful big uh, black gate that we're going to see if we can get some close-ups of as well as the walls and we'll see if we can poke the camera lens through the gates as well and get some interiors of the courtyard. So first shot we're going to take here is just a straight up shot of the uh, entrance to the stable here. Uh, we're going to get some of the gates with the black and the gold um, gilding in and uh, we're going to see how the camera can cope with the, uh, with the long um, run up to the top of the shot with some of the sky in it as well and see how it copes with the differences in colour. So the D700, we all agree, is a very nice camera. It's very well built. They've put a lot of thought into a lot of the insides of it. It's a smaller version of the D3, so they're not actually breaking any grounds with it, um, but it is a cheaper version. So if you want in the FX format and you've got about two grand lying around, then take a good look at this because you'll get some really nice results.